All right, God bless you guys, and welcome to This Is It, Before the Fire. His purpose was to make one new man from the two, thus making peace and making your eyes single, redoubling your eyes, restoring your vision, waking you up from the dead, because when you have one eye that's down, you're the walking dead. But when your eye gets turned up, your, your whole body's full of light. Instead of light and dark, it's light and light. And you're no longer the walking dead. And your sentence has been disannulled. You no longer have a record held against you. Let me show you something. If ye then being, be risen with Christ, seek ye those things which are above, with where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Ready? If you be risen with Christ... It says to rouse, look, to rouse from death in company with, that is to revivify, to raise up together. You've been turned up. You can see you are no longer the walking dead. If you be risen to rouse from death. Ready? Denoting union with or together so now that you've been turned up you're together with christ you're two ups you're no longer an up and a down you become unified with christ your eyes have become single you are unified together and the two become one it says it right here look denoting union with together look at this but much closer than 33 26 or 38 44 Y'all know that Mark Zuckerberg, uh, who looks like Data from Star Trek, by the way, <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he, uh, star, he changed the name of Facebook to Metabook, right? Let me show you a little Metabook thing. So let me show you a picture of Dracula. Now you can pretend Dracula is Satan or whatever you want, but every one of these is a picture of some other, some other person. And there is, Maybe, I don't know how many pictures are in there, but tens of thousands of people's pictures make up one big face of Dracula. Okay, that could be defined as meta. Let me show you. Let's go back. So, if you be risen with Christ, it means to denote union with or together. And then it says, but much closer than, much closer than what, Johnny? Well, much closer than this. Much closer than meta. You know, like meta book, which means denoting accompaniment amid. Genitive case association, that which is joined, occupying an intermediate position in between. And if you've seen a lot of the stuff going on these days, you'll see two different images and in the middle of the, the two images you'll see the one joining them together um i have so many images of that in the that kind of union in the folder it's ridiculous if you be risen with christ to rouse from death denoting union with or together. But it's much closer than G3326, which is meta. It's different than meta. It means association, companionship, resemblance, possession, addition, including completeness. That's what this, this Greek word, 4862, which comes from 4891, which means if you be risen with Christ. It doesn't mean you've left the earth. It doesn't mean you've left your body. It means that you've been turned up. Now watch. It says it. Watch. <laughs> to rouse from death, right? To raise up together. Watch. Okay, so it says denoting union with or together, but much stronger than the word meta. It means collecting one's faculties. It means to waken, that is to rouse literally from sleep 
or from sitting or lying down position, figuratively to awake, to lift up. Look, watch this. I'll enlarge this. See, to awake, to lift up, to raise up, to raise again, to rear up, to rise up, to stand up from a down position. How many times have I told you, you got to get turned up? There it is, again. And when it talks about your identity is not in Christ. If ye being raised with Christ, so he's not talking about you died and you went to heaven, he's talking about right now. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek ye those things which are above. Let's see, ready? Above, 507. Upward or on the top. I obviously have this. Uh, <laughs> opposite. <laughs> opposite of what? Well, seek ye things, the things that are, it says up or on the top. The opposite of down. Do y'all get the, <laughs> y'all see? Look, if you go at the Bible, the way I'm showing you that the way the Lord showed me and taught me, 100% nylon. Think of nylon as having a twin word. Nylon one way, no lie in the other way. So I wanted to know the truth. I had prayed and said, God, I just want to know the truth. The world doesn't make any sense. None of it makes any sense at all. If you're God and I know you're God, every, there's got to be an order to things. There's got to be something that makes sense of all this world. There's got to be. 100% nylon. <laughs> when the Lord saved me, the night he saved me, he told me to turn that tag, the word nylon, told me to turn it upside down. 100% no line. So when you turn the world upside down, you see the truth. You're born again. You've been converted. And you can rest assured that God will carry out every other promise in the Bible that's made to you, you can count on. See, and there's your peace. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Satan, he's the Prince of Darkness, isn't he? He's the Prince of this world. Set your affection on things above. See, like it says, upward. See it? It says, look, <laughs> on the top, above, brim, high, up. Set your, th your affection on things up. <laughs> Ready? Opposite, that is instead of, for, and the room of, to denote contrast, requital. <laughs> for you are dead and your life is hid in Christ, Christ. To conceal properly by covering, to hide self and keep secret. It's always perfect. <laughs> Every time. Okay, here you go. Ready? Let's go. <clears throat> so I showed you Julian Assange. What did he say? L or no, you know what? I thought I showed it to you. We're going to start and watch this. Now, you know what? Let's do let's do let's do the Bible again real quick before Julian Assange. Let me uh let me show you Genesis 1. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face the face as the part that turns of the waters and it says semen. Okay. And then Elohim created man in his own image. See right here, Elohim. It's not the Lord God. It's gods of the Supreme God. So Elohim created man in his own image. And see, it says his. What's the word image? Everybody say it. Say it out loud. Salem, Salem, Salem. What does it mean? It means to shade. A phantom that is figuratively an illusion. Say these words out loud. A resemblance. Kent's a representative figure, especially an idol. Now say image equals idol. Image in his own idol image. Representative figure, especially an idol. Now, Here's the word image. Here's the definition of the word image. Let's substitute the definition for the word. So Elohim created man in his own resemblance, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. 
Now, can you imagine if you were a little child and your mom and dad told you, hey, listen, so you, this world that you've been born into, your body is an idol and the enemy knows it. So the enemy is going to be hunting you through the host body system to try and destroy you. But you can turn back to God and tell God you're sorry for what you, anything you've done against him. And he'll forgive you. And then you're the two halves are made whole because you're a kingdom divided. You're in a male female energy system now because Elohim created it and you were willing to go along with it. See, so Elohim created man in his own Selem, a phantom and illusion resemblance since a representative figure, especially an idol in the image of Elohim created he him. There it is. Male and female created he them. Okay, now, can you imagine if you told your kids, you know, when they, let's say when they were old enough to understand it, maybe by the time they're eh, 10 before they hit puberty, maybe eight or nine, say, here's what's up. Then as they grow up, and I, I showed my children this at those ages, I was like, this is the truth. Why wouldn't you? So as they grew up, they would know the truth and they wouldn't be indoctrinated into the lies of the world. Let me show you what Genesis 2 says. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. Look right there. See the word host? All the host. A mass of persons or figuratively th figurative things, especially regularly organized for war. Hardship, worship, waiting upon, war, battle, warfare. Doesn't the Bible say as a good soldier for Christ, do this and do this and do this? Well, Genesis 2 just told you, look, and thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them, the host, a group organized for war. And on the seventh day, Elohim rested from his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work. Deputy ship, right there. See it? Deputy ship. And from the, the root, Malak, to dispatch as a deputy, a messenger specifically of God that is an angel. A So that's not the Lord God, is it? Can it be the Lord God? Yes or no? Zero percent that that's the Lord God. Zero percent. It's a messenger dispatched right here. Says it. On the seventh day, Elohim ended his work. Deputy ship. See it? He ended his deputy ship right there. So if he ended his deputy ship and he had to take a break, that's because now that's the flesh under the law. Here's the flesh, creation of the flesh. Genesis 2, on, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Okay, ready? Did y'all know it? the whole thing was a war from Genesis 1? So Genesis 1 was the production of the mass organized for war. That's what the Bible just said. <laughs> it's like there's no arguing what I'm showing you. Just no one ever taught it to y'all where they looked. I was taught by the Lord God himself. I was not taught the scriptures by any man. The Lord taught me. So, in Genesis, if you're, if you're looking at Genesis 2, verse 1, thus the heavens and the earth were finished. But I want just watch. Finished to complete. And the host of them. A mass of persons or figurative things especially regularly organized for war. 
an army. An army. And on the seventh day, Elohim, which says, of the supreme God, ended his deputyship. And right there, the root of that word is malak. It means to dispatch as a deputy messenger specifically of God. So it's a deputy dispatched by God. Who was given that deputy ship? Did you know that Lucifer is the anointed cherub that covereth? He's the canopy over the body. The anointed cherub that covereth. Isn't it fascinating? The Lord told me to get a canopy made. You know, my parachute, my can, it's called a canopy. That says V for vengeance. And it has, yeah, makes a big red X. Impossible. Okay, anyway, here we go. Let's go back to it. So y'all are watching this, right? You understand that that's not the Lord God right here. It says Elohim ended his work. And then in Genesis 2, verse 7, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Okay, so now listen to Julian Assange, please. Pay very close attention to what he says about war and how ignorance and uh, those who lie and keep secrets, they're the ones. And I'm going to break through the secrets again tonight. I'm going to show you four, five different guys all singing the exact same song, Lucifer donning his own creation. I just showed it to you in the Bible. You're looking at... You're looking at the Bible. Now listen, I just want you to understand. There is no amount of money that can buy the gift that's being given to you right now. The truth. Jesus died on a cross so his spirit could take over host bodies and those host bodies would manifest supernatural spiritual gifts, which the Lord has allowed me to participate in out of his benevolence and his willingness to deal with even someone as just as myself. Supernatural spiritual gifts flow through those that he occupies and he uses as teachers and prophets. That's why I lay hands on people that are sick, that have stage four cancer, and they're well. People that are blind and they see. Because the Lord God does it through me. It's not me. It's the Lord using my body as a place for his spirit to reach out and do the things he wants to do to glorify the Lord God in heaven and to get everybody ready for what's coming because I am an end time harbinger. I just showed you something in Genesis that the Lord God shared with me years ago that I've come up a lot. Of, there's been a lot of pushback from the mainstream uh, religious people. Of course there is, because they've been indoctrinated. But I'm going to prove it to you. Using the Word of God again. Always. Here we go. Pay attention. Is that nearly every war that has started in the past 50 years has been a result of media lies. The media could have stopped it if they had searched deep enough, if they hadn't um, reprinted government propaganda, they could have stopped it. But what does that mean? Well, that means basically populations don't like wars. And populations have to be fooled into wars. Populations don't willingly and op with open eyes go into a war. So if we have a good media environment, then we'll also have a peaceful environment. But our number one enemy is ignorance. And I believe that is the number one enemy of everyone, uh, is not understanding what is actually going on in the world. It's only when you start to understand that you can make effective decisions and effective plans. Now, the question is, who is promoting ignorance? Well, those organizations that try to keep things secret.
Who is promoting those boars? Those that are, that are trying to keep things secret. That's a fact. And I'm going to show you how that plays out and what's going on right now with what's unfolding in the world. World War III has already begun, guys. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. I'm going to show you what's coming. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. But I'm going to show you behind the veil, too. I'm going to give you some scriptures, and I'm going to try and make you just use some cognitive reasoning skills so you can reason some things out. Did you know the Bible says we have received the spirit of adoption? Yeah. Do you know what someone that's adopted is? You had a different father and mother, but someone else from a different family adopted you. So if we're adopted by God, what family were we adopted from? Well, if you signed yourself over to Lucifer in the beginning, then Lucifer is your daddy. Satan's your daddy. And if you were a light being in the beginning and he brought you here, remember, he's called the light bearer. What do you think the light was that he brought to the system? That's right. We're light beings that are caught in host bodies that are darkness. So we're light and darkness in the same system. Pretty wild, isn't it? You want to see wild? Okay. Those that try and keep things secret. Okay, now. Okay, so I want you all just to listen. I, I don't really get involved too much in politics, but it's important. I mean, I have to, you know, show you some stuff because it's playing out now. So now, you all remember this guy named Fauci, you know, He's as big a liar as Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and the rest of the gang. Did you know the Bible says if you're a liar, you're a child of Satan? If you haven't repented from lying totally, if you have just, if you haven't quit lying completely, if you still lie, you are not a child of God. You had to quit lying 100% no lying. And if you lied about something, you got to go tell the truth and make it clean. You know, like King David, when King David totally screwed up and he slept with Bathsheba, he killed Uriah, lied about the whole thing. Man, the Lord God wasn't going to just let him off the hook. He made him come clean, say it was me. Then he had to be on the run for a long time. And he had to suffer all the consequences that came from his actions. The Lord still kept him. He didn't lose his, he didn't lose his relationship with the Lord. He, he severely damaged it, but the Lord had mercy on him. But still, the consequence engine keeps turning. The consequence engine doesn't stop turning. Now, I want you to watch what's going on here. Now, we all know that there's a lab in Wuhan, and yeah, oh, they wouldn't even let you say online that uh, it was leaked from the lab. They would shut down your channel and all that. Well, now we, we know it was. Now we all know that Hillary Clinton, the one who claimed Trump, hired foreign agents. We know she hired foreign agents. We know that John Durham is indicting people in Hillary's group. We know they're all a bunch of serious liars. That's just a fact. They're just liars. We know that the Bidens were in business in the Ukraine and in China. We know that Joe Biden told, very braggingly said uh, to the prosecutor, he told Zelensky, if you don't get rid of the prosecutor that's going after Hunter, Hunter you're not getting your $8 billion. And he was all bragging about it. What was Hunter Biden doing over there in, in the Ukraine? Huh. Isn't that weird? Like all of a sudden Ukraine's popping off. Uh, what was Hunter and Joe Biden doing over in China? Yeah. Well, we know that the coronavirus got leaked from China. We know that Fauci lied out his ass about, uh, oh, no gain of function. We know that they're all liars. So what what happened? Well, they rolled out this thing called the crown virus. Corona means crown. Crown virus. Maybe they don't want anyone to get a crown. Maybe they want everyone to stay in this right side up, upside down situation. I can show you some pictures. Anyway, but let's look a little deeper. Did you know what's going on right now in the Ukraine? All of a sudden, we're finding out that there's all these bio labs. What? Yeah, bio labs, you know, like the one in Wuhan. 
where you know the the bat soup got spilled on someone's mustache and then <laughs> he kissed his wife and then coronavirus took over the whole world. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. You got a little bat soup on you there. Y'all know it's just all total bullshit, right? <laughs> it's like, okay. All right. Just want to make a point. Just, you know, come on. Yeah. Whatever. Bat soup. Okay. Sure. So anyway, don't you find it interesting that the Bible says in the end, a fourth of the world is killed by famine and pestilence. Pestilence is disease. You know, that could be from a lab that was working on gain of function because of a bunch of psychotic politicians that think it's okay to do all this kind of stuff. But it'd be pretty easy to just let some of those pathogens out, wouldn't it? And then they could just do their job, like this whole coronavirus thing that they used. What if there's more coronaviruses in the wings waiting? Huh. I wonder if the reason they went to war is for what I'm about to show you. I wonder. <laughs> Don't forget what the Bible says. A fourth of the world's population is killed by famine, pestilence, which is stuff like coronavirus, even though it's not the coronavirus. It's going to be way worse. And by the beasts of the earth. And we know what the beasts of the earth are. They're the double downers that are everywhere. And then once God's spirit's taken away, it's, it's going to be the beast is unleashed because that spirit that was keeping the beast at bay is going to be taken off. And it's going to... the the beast is going to have full access to the host body system. So here we go. Watch. Pay attention. Pay attention. So it's without even going into the, what they told us was Russian disinformation is actually true. How concerned are you that Torian Newland, who's overseeing this war, has just admitted there are unsecure bio agents, dangerous bio agents in Ukraine? I'm extremely concerned, as should be every American and everyone in the world. Uh, the seriousness of this situation really can't be overstated. First of all, she didn't say no when she was asked yeah. by Marco Rubio about there being biological or chemical weapons in Ukraine. So uh, if, if there were or are, obviously that would be a, a violation of the Biological Weapons Convention. Uh, number two. She, they're, they're categorically been trying to hide this, as you've laid out very, very well. And then once they were found out, rather than saying, hey, you know what, this is a, a critical emergency, it's a crisis, we have these pathogens in the midst of a war zone, yes. not just in one location, but between 20 and 30 labs. In <laughs> okay. Between 20 and 30 labs. So they've been very reluctant to let everybody know, oh my gosh, there's these, there's all these labs over there that have bio agents. Oh no, no. And now all of a sudden they're being found out. Huh. Wonder what that means for everybody. In Ukraine. We, this is a global crisis. We're going to take action. This is a, a critical emergency. It's a crisis. We have these pathogens in the midst. She, they're, they're categorically been trying to hide this, as you've laid out very, very well. And then once they were found out, rather than saying, hey, you know what? This is a, a critical emergency. It's a crisis. We have these pathogens in the midst of a war zone, yes. not just in one location, but between 20 and 30 labs. In Ukraine, we this is a global crisis. We're going to take action immediately. This is how a responsible leader would react given the crisis of this moment. But instead, what did they do? Her response to, to Senator Rubio was immediately start pointing fingers. We're going to preemptively start the blame game should anything exactly. happen to these pathogens and, and who knows what is going on in these labs before anything bad happens, just say, you know what, it's the bad guys. It's the bad guys who are responsible for this. It's, I, it is the height of irresponsibility, their response to this, the fact that they're covering it up, the fact that they aren't doing really what needs to be done. Because if, unless this war in Ukraine ends right now, ends tonight, we face a, a very real certainty that one or more of these labs will be compromised, will be breached, and it won't just be the people of Ukraine who are impacted. We could face another cri global crisis when you look at a pathogen that could be released. We just went through this 
with COVID. Uh, we can't have forgotten this already. And once again, agencies in the U.S. government, without our knowledge, are secretly funding research that, you know, imperils the world. And no. There you go. So there you go. Just kind of getting it out now a little bit. Uh, now, you remember what Julian Assange said about ignorance. Well, did you know the whole world was made ignorant to the understanding of the world, word of God? Did you know that Satan sent his minions to the front lines? Where would you send your guys in a war? Where do you fight the war? On the front line. That's where the two battle. That's where the two groups meet. Well, in this world, if there's people like as a father, I wanted to get my children to know God. I, I wanted to protect their souls. You know, it might be smart to go to a church and say, well, there's the guy that's the expert. There's the guy that talks to God. There's a guy that reads the Bible. He understands. And you might go there and talk to him about training up your child when they're young so they understand they were born into a war zone. What does Genesis 1 and 2 say? Genesis 1 says, Elohim said, let us create man in our representative figure, especially an idol. So in the image of Elohim, in the representative figure, especially an idol of Elohim, created he him, male and female created he them. Voila, Genesis 2. And Elohim rested from all his work deputy deputyship, because he's a deputy. You know the song, I shot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. There you go. Okay, so anyway, so we know that Elohim's not the Lord God. Genesis 2 is the Lord God, breathing into man a living soul, the breath of life, and man becomes a living soul. And he names his man Adam with a capital A, not Adam. A-D-A-M is Adam in Genesis 1. Genesis 2 the word for man, he has a proper name, is Adam, capital A. It's different. So anyway, so these are the things the Lord God showed me. The, de the, the detail, God is in the details. You know, that term, the devil is in the details, was stolen from God is in the details. Yep. So now we have U.S. officials. Making statements about bio weapons labs in Ukraine that are directly in the line of fire. What was Hunter Biden doing over there in the Ukraine? What, isn't that weird that that's where all this conflicts popping off? Isn't it weird that they were so intent about lying about Donald Trump in the Ukraine? Some nonsense about Trump. They made up all these lies. Remember Russian collusion, Russian collusion, Russian collusion. By the way, that's a propaganda technique called the Grosse Luga, what Hillary Clinton and the media did, that's called the Grosse Luga. And that's the big lie. That's what Hitler did when he bombed the Reichstag. He blamed the Jews and they just played it over and over and over again. And then they blamed it on the Jews. Let me show you what the propaganda technique called the Grosse Luga. I hope I'm saying that it's German, um, but it means the big lie. Let me show you. Okay, hang on one sec. Okay, so here you go. So here's uh, uh, the big lie. Gross, I, I believe it's pronounced gross eluga, is a gross distortion of misrepresentation of the truth used especially as a propaganda technique. The German expression was coined by Adolf Hitler when he dedicated his 1925 book Mein Kampf to describe the use of a lie so colossal that no one would believe that someone could have the impudence, oh, sorry, to have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously. He claimed that the technique had been used by the Jews to blame, to blame Germany's loss in World War I on a German general, blah, 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 who was a prominent nationalist. But the truth is, the Nazis used the idea of the original big lie to turn sentiment against Jews and justify the Holocaust. So if you look at uh, the details about it, it says Herf maintains that Goebbels and the Nazi parties actually used the big lie technique that they described 
and that they used it to turn long-standing anti-Semitism in Europe into mass murder. There you go, into mass murder. Her further argues that Nazis' big lie was their depiction of Germany as an innocent, besieged land striking back at international Jewry, you know, the Jews, which Nazis blamed for starting World War I. Nazi propaganda repeatedly claimed that the Jews held power behind the scenes in Britain, Russia, and the United States. It further spread claim that the Jews had begun a war of extermination against Germany and they used these to assert that Germany had the right to annihilate the Jews in self-defense. So now pay attention right now. Just pay attention right now. Just remember Russian collusion. Russian. Okay, you know every time they said Russian collusion was a lie. When the media said Russian collusion against Trump, it was a lie. James Comey, Adam Schiff, uh, Brennan, all those guys, they're all liars. That makes them children of Satan. If you're a liar, you're a child of Satan in a story. Okay, look, here we go. Watch this. All this was inspired uh, was inspired by the principle, which is quite true within itself, that in a big lie, there is always a certain force of credibility because the broad masses of a nation are always more easily corrupted in the deeper strata of their emotional nature than consciously or voluntarily. Read it again. Nations are always more easily corrupted in the deeper strata of their emotional nature rather than consciously or voluntarily. And thus, in the primitive simplicity of their minds, they more readily fall victims to the big lie than the small lie, since they themselves often tell small lies in little matters but would be ashamed to resort to large-scale falsehoods. It would never come into their heads to fabricate colossal untruths, and they would not believe others could have the impudence to distort the truth so infamously, even though the facts which prove this to be to be so may be brought clearly to their minds, they still doubt and waver and will continue to think there may be some other explanation. For the grossly impudent lie always leaves traces behind it, even after it has been nailed down, a fact which is known to all expert liars in this world and all who conspire together in the art of lying. So in Hitler's psychological profile, U.S. psychological profile, the phrase big lie was used in a report prepared around 1943. Um, for, uh, by Walter Langer of the Strategic Services in describing Hitler's psychological profile. The report was later published in the form of a book of The Mind of Adolf Hitler. His primary rules were, okay, now ready? I'm going to read Hitler's primary rules in propagating the big lie. When I read them, just remember everything they said about Trump that wasn't true. Just remember how the media, every single one of the pundits was complicit. Every one of them was. Everyone that uttered the word, every single one of them that uttered untruths were complicit. Listen. His primary rules, Hitler's primary rules, never allow the public to cool off. Never admit a fault or wrong. Never concede that there may be some good in your enemy. Never leave room for alternatives. Never accept blame. Concentrate on one enemy at a time and blame him for everything that goes wrong. People will believe a big lie sooner than a little one. And if you repeat it frequently enough, people will sooner or later believe. Okay, so... You know that the Bible says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So that's one of the commandments. So that's not some little thing. So bearing false witness, that means if you go on and you're running your mouth, saying somebody did something they didn't do, and what's even worse is they all knew he didn't do it. Could you be children of anyone other than the Satan if that's what you're doing? You're actually pursuing someone's well-being, trying to put them in prison, 
even though they did nothing wrong. As a matter of fact, Hillary Clinton's the one that did everything she said Donald Trump did. And we know that now. That's Durham is indicting people now. wonder why this war in the Ukraine is so conveniently happening right when Durham is zeroing in on Hillary Clinton and the gang. I wonder what Hunter and Joe were doing in the Ukraine. I wonder why Joe Biden wouldn't give them $8 billion unless they dropped the thing against Hunter. I wonder what was on Hunter's laptop. I wonder what Hunter's relationship with China is. I wonder why they're covering up the fact that Fauci was doing gain of function in the very lab that leaked the coronavirus. I wonder why there's all kinds of, you know, uh, bioweapons labs, apparently, and same gain-of-function research that seem to be in the line of fire in the current situation in the Ukraine. I wonder why we left $87 billion worth of equipment for the Taliban instead of just destroying it in place, by the way, which is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to destroy it in place so your enemy doesn't have a bunch of guns to use against you. But, you know, hey, maybe I didn't go to general school, but uh, you know, it's probably just a good idea, right? Yeah. Huh. I wonder why. I wonder why Obama gave like, wh how, wh how many billion in cash and gold bullion was on that plane he flew to Iran at night? I wonder why they're digging, uh, Biden's digging into our reserve oil supplies, like our, our emergency reserve oil that is put aside in case of war or something, instead of just starting up oil production here in the U.S., like when Trump had everything energy independent. The reason they wanted Trump out is they couldn't carry through their new world order plans, which meant to bring down the U.S. You got to take down the U.S. to establish the new new world order. But now do you see the U.S. being taken down? from the inside. I remember a prophetic utterance back in 2007 and behold the, uh, the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place where it should not be. Here's a mystery made known to you. You are the holy place of which I speak and the abomination shall rise from within the walls of the temple to destroy the temple. I was prophesying the destruction of the temple in 2007. For mighty is your enemy that is risen from within your own borders. Those were the words of that prophetic utterance in 2007 before any of this stuff happens. Does it look like we have a mighty enemy rising up within our own borders? I wonder why the southern border is open. I wonder why that's okay, but we got to secure Ukraine's border. But we can't secure our own southern border. I mean, I'm just asking questions. I wonder why... They don't teach us in church that Elohim said, let us create man in our image, representative figure, especially an idol. Hmm. Let's watch what they used to say about Trump real quick. Don't forget, it's been proven false. So that means they knew it was false, and yet they still got all excited. Joyce Bear is an evil, sick, twisted witch. She's a sick woman. They're all sick women. On this show. Watch, look at this ridiculous setup. Ready? Here we go. Breaking news. Oh my God. Oh, breaking oh. news. ABC News' Brian Ross is reporting Michael Flynn promised full cooperation to the Mueller team and is prepared to testify that as a candidate, Donald Trump directed him to make contact with the Russians. Yes! <laughs> confident now, even more so than I have been throughout the last year, that this nightmare presidency of Donald John Trump will end prematurely and end soon. If we discover that Donald Trump or his advocates played a role in helping to devise strategy, if they are the ones who came up with crooked Hillary, crooked Hillary, I think that is something that would 
put the question squarely on the table whether or not he should be impeached. It supposedly happened in 2013, the year Trump hosted the Miss Universe pageant in Moscow. The bombshell burst Tuesday evening when CNN reported the president-elect and President Obama were briefed on the matter last week. The report included unsubstantiated claims that Russian intelligence compiled a dossier on Mr. Trump during visits to Moscow. He dismissed outright the very idea that he would take part in the sordid acts described in the report. He denied everything. He called it all fake news. The 35-page dossier on the so-called Russian connection to Trump, with some very salacious allegations, including unsubstantiated claims about Trump in a Moscow hotel room, was not completed until just before the election and then provided to journalists, the Clinton campaign, and the FBI. It claims that Donald Trump once visited Russia stayed in the Ritz-Carlton in Moscow, and then hired prostitutes to perform a golden shower, and that Russia might have the whole thing on tape. There were surveillance cameras in this room because the building is wired, and that the FSB has this because they automatically have cameras in the room, and they caught this happening. Donald Trump engaged in perverted acts with prostitutes. Trump immediately denied the report. I'd like to ask you about your big Russian pee pee party. No, no, I am not talking about the pee pee. <laughs> because it didn't happen. From there, the president elect lit into the news media again. He condemned BuzzFeed. It was a failing pile of garbage. Writing it, I think they're going to suffer the consequences. They and he are. accused CNN and of being CNN, fake news Brian, and brushed Brian. off persistent Go attempts ahead, by its correspondent to Don't ask a question. Don't Later, CNN's parent company, Time Warner, defended its reporting, and BuzzFeed said it published what it called a newsworthy document. It claims Trump set out to defile the suite because President Obama and the first family had once stayed there, and Trump, quote, hated the Obamas. Everything that, uh, that I had written in the, you know, in, in the months prior to uh, that dossier coming out was almost identical to what the CIA had written because we're intelligence officers. This is what we do. That corroboration, based on intercepted communications, has given U.S. intelligence and law enforcement, quote, greater confidence in the credibility of some aspects of the dossier. The most salacious and unverified claims are that the Russian Secret Service, or FSB, secretly filmed Mr. Trump with prostitutes in this Moscow hotel room three years ago. Allegations the special counsel continues to investigate, George. And so far, it is us as American citizens, it is us in the press who are connecting the dots on this story, who are figuring this out. Did the Trump campaign, did the candidate at the heart of it, conspire with Russia to subvert American democracy, or and... Does Russia have some kind of leverage over Donald Trump? If this BuzzFeed News report is true, then we are likely on our way to possible impeachment proceedings. If this story is true, we must begin impeachment proceedings. Uh, this is suborning perjury. I think there's no question it's an impeachable offense. And at that point, we are in high crimes and misdemeanor, and we are in impeachment right. territory. Right. This president needs to be impeached. Impeachment is the remedy. I mean, the president can't... It's the it only is. remedy. The spirit of what Trump did is clearly treasonous. This is moving into perjury, false statements, uh, and even into potentially treason. There's outright treason. I mean, there is no question. I think he's feeling the noose around his neck. The, the noose is tightening, oh. and I think they're shocked that the noose is tightening. He feels the noose is tightening. The noose is tightening. The sound of hoofbeats of all those investigations catching up with Donald Trump must be loud in his ears. Hmm. He may be the first president uh, in quite some time to face the real prospect of jail time. People might go to jail. You're exactly right. For the that rest of their lives. I think they're all going to jail. Well, I think they're all going to end up together in prison, and maybe that's a good thing. Oh, my thing. God. He has no idea that right. he's going down. You're confident that at least some Trump associates will wind up in jail? If I was betting, I would say yes. Donald Trump has been a Russian intelligence asset since 1987. We are at war with Russia. The nation and all of our freedoms hang by a thread, and the military apparatus of this country is about to be handed over to scum who are beholden to scum, Russian scum. Okay, let's try this again. Now, here we go, watch. So you see the serpent eating its own tail? That is, represents an entire Earth system. The serpent will consume the right side up star 
and the upside down star, male and female energy from the beginning to the end of the world. And we're at the end now because it's all become female. So the female is the female has consumed the male. There's a limited amount of energy for each world. And now the end has come. I'm here to just ring the bell. Now watch this. Just watch. Okay, just real quick. Just remember everything they said was a lie. Everything they said was a lie. And so, see, lies have taken over. There's no more truth. Lies have taken over everything. Now watch. Let me show you something. Here's male and female energy. So here represents an angel. Right side up, red. Upside down, female. Male and female. Same host body. Okay, now watch. Here you go. There it is right here. So if I take, let's see if I can. If I take female right here and look, I put it right there upside down. And then I'll let it go. And then I take male right here, male energy. And then I put the male right side up. See, right side up. So now you see male and female, and the serpent consumes it. That's what the serpent race does. Now let's just look at Van Halen. Look, get it? Seesaw. Up, it goes up and down, right? So if there is a male on one side, boy, girl, whatever, up and down. Now look what, look what the picture is. Just look at it. Why is it this? Why do you have two combined? Why is it Van Halen? Why does it say balance? In the image of Elohim created he him, male and female created he them. There it is. So, even when you look at a deputy badge, look at a deputy badge, look what it is. See the deputy badge right there? Did you know in the middle of the kelepot, which is what this, the Statue of Liberty sits on the 11-pointed star, which is a hendecagram, which is a kelepot, for those of y'all that know what I'm talking about. If y'all know what I'm talking about, y'all should be going like, yeah, everything I told you, look, it's perfect. Watch, look. See, there's the same as a deputy badge. What's in the middle of the, what's in the middle of the kelepot right there? Right side up, upside down, triangles interlocked. What's in the dead center of that? A five-pointed star. And that the kelepot represents the host body. It says, housing the essence of holiness. A peel, a shell, or a husk. Inherently evil, the host body. That's why the Statue of Liberty is standing on top of a kelepot. She's standing on top of what represents the host body system. Now you have the Twin Towers burning right in front of the Statue of Liberty, representing the liberty that all the angels took. All right, do you all understand that now all the stuff I've shown you now in high sight is so, it's like so perfect, it's frightening. It's so crazy. I'm sorry, maybe, I, you know, uh, I should stay a little bit more on task tonight, but I'm just, I can't help it. I flip a page and I'm like, wow, there it is. It's Everything I've shown you is true. How crazy is this? Yep. Statue of Liberty. Standing on top of basically this exact thing. That exact same thing. I just showed you. This is what the Statue of Liberty is standing on top of right here. And there's the system right there. You put a star in the middle. And the goal is to destroy that star, which is an angel. And the time is here. So now, now I need to circle all the way back to the very beginning of the video. Remember the deputy, the deputy that took a that took a rest from all his deputy ship work after the formation of his army. Genesis one was the formation of an army, by the way. It said, and Elohim rested from his work deputy ship and all the host was ready the host means 
a group organized for war. So Genesis 1 was the deputy organizing his troops for war. Now the whole world makes sense. Ready? Here you go. Now let's don't ever forget where are they standing while they sing to Lucifer donning his own creation? Where are they standing? They're standing inside of a snake. A serpent, because the serpent race is the race that's keeping you a slave by sin and your fear of death. Okay, sorry guys. I, I'm always going to show it. I don't care how many times you've seen it. It is the most profound revelation that solved the entire system was getting to see this. The Vatican is a serpent wearing a crown. Let me show you this other folder. Let me show you one of the, the audience hall. So here's audience hall. That's one snake. See this? That's the head of a serpent. See it? There's the eye. The whole thing's the head of a serpent. That's audience hall. That's one serpent head. Wow. And then you have the Vatican itself right here, which is also the head of a serpent wearing a crown. So you have male and female serpents. So you have two serpents right next to each other. Do you know why it's two serpents? Two buildings that they built as serpent heads? Parthenogenesis, virgin genesis. A reptilian race is able to self-fertilize, transgender, self-fertilize, and then just populate. That's what Genesis 1 is. It's the, it's, uh, it's parthenogenesis. The archetype was the first one was female. That's why you have the Adidas original commercials with Kendall Jenner in the little tube. The original, Adidas original. Because it's true. That's why the Vatican has two snakes. Parthenogenesis. A serpent race starting the host body system. A serpent race starting the host body system. God's angels being foolish enough to say they wanted to be part of it. So you get your host body, but you're in a twin system. And if you don't get inverted, converted, and redeemed, then you get to be a part of the serpent race forever. You're consumed into uh, being a locust. A locust eats you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <I'm> just... <laughs> anyway, yeah, here we go. Sorry. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, beside, I just, my brain is literally overloaded i'm going to show you a few more pictures just to just to round this thing out for you i want you to see this but i want you to see this video first ready here we go they are standing inside of a giant serpent wearing a crown. Okay. Did you hear Julian Assange? Ignorance. Ignorance. And those that want to keep secrets hidden are the ones that cause all these wars. So, you ready to see what's about to happen? There is a war between truth and lies. Lies is taking over the entire world. We know the way uh, the, the Bible says the end of the world goes. It's the great tribulation. I don't want any of y'all to be here for it. I don't want any. That's why I broke down the other day. I don't want anyone to see what's coming. I don't want anyone to be here for it. But there's very few that actually don't have to see it that are alive at that time. If you're the Church of Philly and you have the key, the key of David, the key of love, the key to knowledge, 
Woe unto you Pharisees, for you hide the key to knowledge. You don't enter the kingdom yourself, and you prevent others. By the way, their damnation shall be the worse. It's true. Watch. Ready? Here we go. Before they start singing, five, five different priests singing inside of a snake to Lucifer dawning his own creation. Do you know why? Because it's true. You were lied to about Genesis 1. And I've said it before, and the Lord made me just crusty enough not to put up with the bullshit, even if it was some preacher that thinks he's some big shot. It's some big ministry. I don't care. I serve the living God. And I'm not afraid of some preacher because he's got a big congregation and a lot of satanic minions behind him. Too bad. The Lord sees everything they do. Here we go. Ready? Five different preachers. Five different singers singing to Lucifer inside of a snake, dawning his own creation. Five. It's not a coincidence. Quelicet divisus in partes, motuat itam en gluminis detrimenta non novi. Supernis luminaribus misceatur, flamas eius, 
Lucifer matutinos inveniat. Ille in quan Lucifer quinescito casum, Christus filius tuus, Christus filius tuus, Christus filius tuus. Flammas eius, Lucifer matutinus inveniat. Ille in quam Lucifer quinescito casum, Christus filius tuus, Qui regressus ab inferis, humano generis serenus illuxit. Et tecum vivit et regnat in secula seculorum. Okay, now I'm just going to make my point, guys. Five different guys <laughs> singing to Lucifer dawning his own creation. Well, isn't that funny? That's what the Bible says. What do you think the world is? It's Lucifer's creation to go against God. You know, we'll make heaven just a place on earth. Hello? Uh, yeah. So, no, no, we'll just do it on earth. Yes. That's what the earth is. Here it is. In the scriptures, an Elohim formed man from the dust of the ground. Oh, uh, no. I'm sorry. That's the Lord God. In Genesis 1, and Elohim created man in his own image, an idol right there. What do you think the largest altar in the world is? It's an idol. It's a big dead sheep of a bunch of angels melting into semen, becoming a penis and a vagina. It's an idol. Get it? Male and female, they're an idol. Woo. <laughs> do you get it? <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm in a mood tonight. Just like, just want to get... Push a little date out. Just show you guys the fake thing. All uh, oh, guys, this is the end. Do you understand? I'm like, do you understand that on the news and now they're finding out? Oh, there's bioweapons labs in the Ukraine. Sure hate to any of those to get out. Well, if you're Lucifer or let you're Satan, let's just stick with Satan. Lucifer is the Satan is the fallen Lucifer. So. What about your end game? What's your end game if you're Satan? Well, you want to take over the world and you want to make everyone have a chip and they all have to get the chip where they can't buy or sell and they all have to worship you or the image of you. That's the end game. The Bible says that a fourth of the world is killed by famine, pestilence, by the beasts of the earth. That's, uh, that's just getting things going though. What do you think is coming next? Do you think you can trust the news to, do you think you can trust your politicians? The only one you can trust is the Lord God, Jesus, the truth. I, he says, I am the truth, the life and the way. So if you haven't made your peace with God, you need to make it now, right away. You need to make your peace with the Lord God and he will invert you and convert you. Admit your guilt before God. Let me show you. Uh, I'd like to go to the, the folder that uh, I've been working on. This one right here. And I want to give you guys an insight. You know what? I think I'll, I'm going to look. I'll show you guys the insight starting tomorrow. Uh, I'll get up and I'll do a video tomorrow. I don't want to put it with this video. Uh, this video, I'm, just, I'm actually very tired and I just don't feel like I'm on task. So I'll give you guys this information right now. And then the video tomorrow, I'm going to just make it short. I'm doing a short series. That's it. I'm going to do short little 20-minute videos after this where I'm just going to make one little point. That's it. And then that way they're easy to find. You can pass them on to friends. I've already done the miles and miles and miles of proof. I'll do short little videos with one or two scriptures and just data. And that's what I'm going to do. I'll do a couple check-in videos in between those, but uh, the long videos, I just don't see a point in them anymore. Um, 
you know, we'll see what happens. But I'm going to concentrate on short little videos, all right? And I'm sorry, again, I'm super tired. I'm just so exhausted. I needed a couple of days, guys, just to get out of me what happened with this reality that I can't, I can't do any more than I've done. I want to save the whole world, but that's just, it's not going to happen. All right, here we go. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you all these things and these scriptures. Remember the virgin stuff I showed you that's the dragon yesterday? We're going to work our way just through this. So we have about, I don't know, three rows of pictures to deal with in the morning and some scriptures that will change the world forever, guaranteed. And like I said, I don't want to just add them on this because I'm just too tired to make a good point with all the stuff I have. I'm exhausted. All right, guys, peace and grace. Let me get my bear. And by the way, the program, uh, it's its done this thing called Truncate. And I don't really understand how to use it on this particular program. I just don't understand it. And it's done it twice during this video. And so I don't even know. After I hang up right now on this, this particular part, I don't even know if it's going to work. So I don't want to just keep going and have it maybe not work. And I'm exhausted. All right. I love you guys in Christ. All right. I love you guys. I'll be a little more peppy tomorrow and uh, we'll get the other stuff. I'm going to start just cranking out little shorties, stuff you can pass around to, you know, people that you want to see it. So they don't have to watch two hours of Jonathan being annoying. All right. But. Wow. We should play a clip.